Hey, welcome back. So today we're gonna to start uh, designing our very first 3D print. And they are very simple little cube puzzle pieces here. And it'll eventually form together into one, you know, bigger, larger cube. And to begin, we're gonna start off with just drawing planes, surfaces, 2D sketches, just like we've been drawing, hand drafting, AutoCAD, all that fun stuff. All right, so let's break down what it is we're actually gonna be doing. Uh, this link can be found in the description. But we will be designing these pieces here in uh, 3D modeling software we're using Onshape today. And the idea here is to stick with our 2D concepts that we already are familiar with, right? So things like uh, front face, side face, top face, those type of things. But instead of calling faces, we're going to call planes now. And we're going to start offsetting planes, words to be familiar with. And we're going to start extruding things. So extruding, press pulling, these type of things is taking our 2D sketches and we're turning them into 3D. All right, so I'm gonna start with something like this right here, right? You click on this, it brings you up to here. What this is, is each plane that we'll be drawing uh, our little cubes on, because all of these shapes here, right, can be extruded out, pulled up into a 3D orientation, right? So looking again, here I have an example here. And I think I actually have it a little larger. There you go. And there's a few rules that we're going to follow. So you're going to fill in your own. You're going to color these in. Uh, you can either use a sheet there, draw uh, like something like Cami or PDF editor, or print it out, color it in yourself with some markers. But there's a few rules, right? And here's the five rules. All right. Stick to five different colors, right? Uh, why do you want to do that? Just simplify it. You want to make six, go for it. But I would stick to five to start. All right, each color needs to have a minimum of four blocks and a maximum of six. What does that mean here, right? Look at my colors here, all right? This blue has one, two, three, four, five, all right? That's what I mean. Uh, how many cubes you're coloring, regardless of levels, uh, total four to six, all right? And then the last rule here is jumping between levels. The same color needs to be directly above or below. And this is an important one. Otherwise your print's not gonna work, all right? So looking at, uh, the colored in aspects here, these are the levels I'm talking about, right? The planes. So each plane, when I'm coloring in a uh, color, right? If I jump up to the next one above it, this has to at least be directly above or below. And look, this is that isometric angle here. So you have to pay attention that, you know, this here is directly above here, right? Far corner here, or side, side here, corner, corner, right? If they are lined up like this, you're fine to jump in between levels. And let's not do a maximum uh, any more than a maximum of six because then it'll be boring minimum of four again because it'll be boring all right so this is what i'm actually going to build i'm going to build this in on shape so you can jump on over to on shape i started a new document i call it cube puzzles and we're just going to start fresh i'm going to assume you guys know nothing about on shape because a lot of you may not and we're going to start with drawing a sketch so our sketch is our 2d drawing that from there we can then make 2D or 3D, sorry. All right, first thing it's asking you is a sketch plane. Where do you want to start your sketch? What plane do you want to begin drawing on? And I'm going to begin drawing on the top plane. I can click on top plane uh, from here, or I can go over on my tree down here and I can click top here. Either or works. And then now I've started a sketch and you'll see it's oriented like my top plane is. This is a bad angle to be drawing at. So what you want to do is what's called normalize your view. It's one of the main hotkeys I use. I have a whole video on hotkeys that you can uh, watch. But N will normalize your view so that you're looking straight down on the plane that you're drawing your sketch on. All right, so I'm gonna start my plane right here, or my sketch right here. Up top are all your sketching options, lines, rectangles, circles. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna do a center point rectangle. All right, and I'm gonna click and drag out. Now it's asking you for the sizes after I've clicked. And our sizes are 2.25, enter, 2.25, enter. How'd I get that? We are drawing doo -doo 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 -doo, a 2.25 inch square here because our cubes are gonna be 0.75 inches, right? Each little square is gonna be 0.75, therefore three of them will be 2.25. Why did I choose that number? Eh, sounded nice to me. And also we're printing these. I don't want them to be huge. All right. So each, uh, the overall square, the overall cube, the big cube is going to be 2.25. All right. 
So 2.25 by 2.25. I'm zooming in with the scroll wheel here. You can always, oh, I'm still in cube, escape. And then you can always click and drag things where you want them. But that's not too important at the moment. So from here now, I want to break this up into my grid, right? I want this to match this grid here. So what that means is I'm going to start drawing lines. I'm going to click on line. I'm going to click and drag down. Look at these orientations. You'll see some symbols here, perpendicular, coincident, vertical, these type of things. If I just click, and I'm actually going to hit escape, right? And this line is blue while my square here is black. I'll explain that in one second. I'm going to click again, line, drag down, click again, escape. You could hit L for line. You can click up here for line. You're going to start doing your shortcuts and hit that button there. But there you go. I have blue. What does blue and black mean in sketching in Onshape and most other softwares as well? It means that it's undefined versus defined. When something is defined, it is driven and that I can change things. So if I jump in here and type in three, it'll change the whole drawing I've been working with, right? Let's go back to 2.25. While this is not have something defining it. So up top here is a dimension. You'll notice I locked in here, locked in here. I click show constraints, you'll see that it's showing this one here, con coincident. But this dimension here, I'm gonna go from here to here. I'm clicking in on mouse wheel to pan. I click here. I can type in 0.75, enter. Now look, I've defined that line. I'm still in dimension. I can go from here to here, click again, type in 0.75, enter. I've now defined those lines. They're now uh, driven by this dimension and locking in on these sides, as well as being vertical here. If I start changing things, uh, it's going to change everything around us. That's why we're using what's called parametric uh, modeling software. All right, we're gonna do the same thing with drawing uh, our horizontal lines, escape, Escape, uh, M is the short key, or D is the short key for dimension. I'm gonna pull out this way, direction doesn't really matter. 0.75, here to here, pull out, 0.75, enter. I now have a fully defined sketch. I'm gonna uncheck show constraints. 2.25 by 2.25 is my overall size, while all these squares are 0.75. We drew a sketch. It's the same grid that we were working with. And now I can actually hit this green check mark. And you'll notice over here, I have sketch one. It's completed, but I can oh, I can go back and start using this. All right, so I'm actually going to look at this in isometric here. And you can see that I'm still on my top plane. And I can go from here and start uh, pulling shapes. All right, so from here, I need to actually make three levels. All right, I have a sketch. It's on my top plane, but I don't have a plane up here and I don't have a plane up here. Whenever we are drawing in any 3D modeling software, you're drawing your 2D sketch on a plane. So that's why that very first thing it asks us when you start a sketch is what plane do you want to draw your sketch on? Okay, so we need to make new planes. So if I look over here, there's the plane button. We're going to add a new plane. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to offset my top plane. So if I click on top plane here, it's asking me to offset. I'm going to offset by the size of my cubes. So my cubes are 0.75. So I'm going to offset by 0.75. Check mark, plane one up in the air. Look at that. I'm going to do it again. This time, I'm going to offset my top plane again. If I click on this arrow, it changes the direction of my offset. And here, 0.75, enter. So now I have three planes from my top. I actually can go over here. I'm going to turn off with the eyeball my front plane, turn off with the eyeball my right plane. So you can see that I have three levels here with my sketch in the middle right now on my front plane, but I have plane one above it, plane two below it. All right, so we're going to start a new sketch to get my other two planes. So sketch, I'm going to choose top plane or the plane one. I'm going to hit N to normalize my view and watch this. We don't have to draw this again. We can hit this button called use so that it'll just copy what we drew on this previous plane, whatever would be projected onto the plane that we're working with now, it'll show up. So if I hit the use button, I'm just gonna highlight this whole square and look at that. It's now on that upper plane. How do I know that? I can turn off sketch one. I still see the grid, but orbit around, I'm now on the upper plane and you'll notice it's still defined. If I actually do show constraints, this symbol here is the use uh, symbol. 
All right, so sketch two now is up there. I'll turn on sketch one again. So we still have three, look at that, or two. I hit that check mark. Now I'm gonna do one more time here. So I have my three levels sketch, this time on the bottom, and to normalize my view. I'm gonna turn off one of these sketches because I don't want duplicates of it. Use convert, highlight, and now that's down in the bottom. If I hit check mark again, and now look at this on isometric, we're turning that one back on. I have three levels of my uh, three planes. I hit the P button to turn off my planes just to make this a little easier to see. But I have my three levels just like my grid here. So from here, we can now take our 2D sketches, our 2D squares, and we can start filling in and making our shapes, making our blocks. All right, so I'm going to pick a color and I'm just gonna go with it and start and build our little cube puzzle here. All right, I'm gonna start with orange. And you'll notice orange, two on the bottom, one in the middle, two on the top, All right? That is this one. So two on the bottom, if I go over here, what do I need to do now from my sketch? I have my sketches on. This button here is extrude. This extrude button will now make your 2D object or 2D sketch into a 3D object. So I click on this, it's asking, what do I want to extrude? It's also asking, is this a new shape? Are you adding to a previous shape? Are you removing? Or is this something with intersecting and you're worrying about that? We're just gonna worry about new and add for right now. All right, so I said I'm gonna start with my bottom. This is my bottom plane. Orange was one and two. So I click on those two squares. I'm gonna change this to 0.75, like I said, right? Hit enter, you'll notice it's now stopping at that plane. But the key thing to remember here, or something you should recognize, is I can't just keep clicking on this next plane. It's gonna make it two separate parts, and I can't just click add right now. So relax with just those two, click check mark. Those are on, you'll notice something else. It turned off our previous sketch. Just come over here to the eyeball, turn it back on. But now when I go to extrude, and I'm gonna go and finish my orange color, I'm going to go to add this time. So add, I had, what do we have here? We have one in the middle, right? And then two on the top. So one in the middle and then one, two on top. And we have to remember to change how far we're extruding. Now, when I click uh, add, I'm only gonna have the one part check mark. There you go, part one. All right, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna right click. I'm going to edit appearance and I have it orange in my thing. I'm just going to choose orange over here, check mark. And I'm actually going to go ahead. We're finished it, but I'm going to hide it. All right, so we did orange. You know what? I'm going to right click, rename orange. Let's move on. We did the orange. Let's do that green next to it. So I have two on the bottom down here, right? Two up top this way and two this way. It goes back and forth, back and forth. So oh, back over here, extrude. Like I said, we are going to go one, two. I'm gonna make it 0.75, enter. This is a new shape, check mark. And now from here, we're gonna do extrude again, this time add. And I went one, two, one, two. Change this to 0.75. Enter and you'll notice merge scope by the way, it automatically assumes since that's the one touching it and it's not turned off that that's the part that we want to merge and add to. Good job on shape. Check mark. We've now made the shape. Good job, team. We are going to right click, rename green, as well as make it green. That's a beautiful green. Check mark. All right, I'm going to eyeball, hide it. Let's keep moving all right along and do the rest of them. All right, so now that I have all of them, we can turn these all back on. All right, I'm gonna turn off my sketches because I don't need to see them right now. And you'll notice I have a full cube and it looks just like that one. 
with the colors a little different. You can go into the mixer and get your colors more accurate if you really want. Now, uh, adjust things to for 3D printing. So what do we need to do to make this 3D printable? Well, one for one thing is we need to shrink it a little bit so that we can uh, worry about any of the tolerance and the bleeding out of a 3D printer. And we also want to do what's called the chamfer on the edge. What that's going to allow is clean up the edges for a 3D printer. So I have my cube here. Everything turned off, planes turned off, origin turned off. I'm going to highlight the whole thing. I'm going to go to a command called move face. It's going to move every single face in a direction. So right now it's moving it outwards. I'm going to click on this so it's moving inwards and look, it looks silly, all small. I made every single face 0.25 inches smaller. We don't need to do that much. We only need to do 0.02. Enter. All right. And now check mark. Look at that. It adds a little bit of space for the 3D printer uh, to print this nice and cleanly. And the last thing for 3D printing, highlight the whole thing. Well, a chamfer. Click on chamfer. Now it's going to do the same thing with the chamfer. It's giving us an error. Changes to 0.02. Enter. And that should fix it. If it doesn't, then you may have to do it individually, part by part, line by line. But now look, we have a chamfer around the whole edge. Good work, team. And now we are ready to 3D print. To get it ready for 3D printing, just throw it over into an assembly. Insert. Click. Click. Check mark, right click, export. All right, STL, millimeter, fine, export as unique parts. And that's all you need to worry about for 3D printing uh, this design that we switch from a 2D uh, sketch into a 3D model. All right, 3D model. Mm. Next time, I'll show you how to make a box for it. Good luck, have fun.